we've got another kettlebell workout today, and we're going to kind of go with the theme of like classic kettlebell. So we're going to have a swing series, we'll have a snatch series, and then we'll end up having an ab series as well. So after we finish our uh, swing and snatch series, then we'll get a mat and go to abs. Each one has eight moves, 50 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest, and we're going to try and repeat each one twice. So that will end up being about 48 minutes minus the warm-up and the cool-down. So it's about an hour workout today. Now, if you were short on time and you just didn't have maybe the motivation to do the whole hour, then you would just do the first three and then stretch and you'd be done. So you don't have to do the entire thing with this. You can just do each round and be done. And that would take you about 25, 30 minutes once you include the warm-up, okay? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. As always, with just a general range of motion warm-up, we'll kind of get through some of those exercises, kind of mimic what they feel like before we actually pick up the bell. And remember, if you don't have a kettlebell, you can always use a dumbbell, no problem. But today is probably pretty important that you have a piece of equipment. So if you don't have a kettlebell or a hand weight, you might want to just pause the video and come back another day with no equipment. So, something for everybody. All right, I've got a 10-pound kettlebell. You could use up to probably a 15-pound hand weight, but I would keep a light one nearby if you had it, so. All right, let's jack. Ooh, my back is sore. I think I needed a mattress. Waking up every morning, my back aches. I'm like, huh, that'd be time for a new mattress. And we're gonna take those arms out. Now, oh yeah, that's where I can feel how sore my back is. It's getting older for the birds. And now arms out, knees are soft, touch down, and just keep the weight in the heels, the back is flat, warming up those hamstrings. Get some squats in, weights in the heels, and come up. Now, we'll have a series of snatches that will combine a squat and then a second move that will combine a deadlift. So let's go ahead and take that right arm, thumb in, squat, snatch, press. So we're going to jump a little bit, come up. Now remember, we don't flip the bell. You don't flip the bell. You're going to roll under it. Roll under it and press. And now we're going to deadlift and snatch with a close row. Little hop there. And keeping that elbow nice and tight to the body. This hand you can always put back. Good. And let's switch. Squat, snatch on the left. Squat, snatch, press. Squat, snatch, press. Your heart rate will be up today. Guarantee, last one. And now deadlift snatch. And it's nice and tight to the side. You can also put the hand down if you need it. You can put it back. This just kind of helps make sure that our shoulders face the floor. Good. Deep breath in, up. And exhale, slide it down. And round it up. Shoulder rolls. Let's mimic a few swings. So, feet are underneath the shoulders, hands are together. Hinge, pop the glutes. Pop the glutes. This is just your basic swing. Now, one hand. Touch at the top. You would switch that held up the top. Again, knees are soft. We're not squatting, we're hinging. And now we're going to step together and we're going to suitcase swing. So now we squat, squeezing those legs together, dropping down using those obliques. Good. <clears throat> and now we're going to hero. Watch. I'm going to come up, turn. Ooh, I may not have a lot of space. I'm going to have to scoot up for you. Let's do that now. <laughs> it's like, wow, okay, my parameters. Come up, turn. Come up. Other side. Now, 
if you're on carpet, or like my surface is not very slick, like I don't have a lot of give here, figure eights, you could just do a regular swing and you just take that hero out. So you would just repeat a swing. Now figure eight, we go under the front. Good, and now we're gonna work on some wood chops. So, nice wide legs. We're gonna come down and up, down and up. Now lunge and up, lunge and up. And you're gonna be using this side of your body to stop the swing. Now what if this bothered you? You could just lunge and press. Good? All right, other side. Lunge, rotate through. Sit down through that leg, through the heel. <clears throat> Remember your option, squat, press. Good. And deep breath in, up. And exhale. Now in the ab series, we are gonna have one section where we have nice wide legs. And we're gonna hold the kettlebell down, the other arm comes up. And we're just gonna triangle down and triangle down. And we're just gonna be stretching through that right hamstring and also through that left oblique. Good. And the other side. Now sometimes you can have the kettlebell in the up hand, but just for purposes of what we're doing today, we're gonna to keep it in that bottom hand. And one more. Good, deep breath in up. What you don't have today is push-ups. <laughs> and round it up. You do have tap back get-ups, you do have cauldrons, and you have partial shoulders get-ups. Those are hard. Okay, you ready to get started? All right, so each move, 50 seconds, 10 seconds of rest. We're gonna go through the whole series. It's eight minutes, we'll rest, get some more water, and then the snatch series, all right? Let's get started. <clears throat> All right. Let's just regular swing. Okay? And here we go. Pinkies outside the horn. Hinge. Up, squeeze the glutes. Whew. Like I said, that heart rate's going to get up, so it won't take long before, it, before you're huffing and puffing like I am. I have a low rest in heart rate, but boy, does my heart rate shoot up quickly, but it recovers quickly too, so <clears throat> that's my norm. Good. Make sure you're squeezing those glutes. Every single time you come up, nice. Now one thing that we didn't review was an around the world, and I'll explain in a minute because that's what we're going to do. You got 10 seconds, and rest. So we're gonna take the kettlebell around the right hip and catch it in the back. This is the one people drop all the time. If you have a dumbbell, this one's incredibly hard to manage. So you could just give me some squats. Just hold that kettlebell at the top and squat. And when we go through this the second time, we'll go the other direction. Now, this doesn't feel like much, but it really is working the core. Knees are soft. Raise in the heel. Z. Heel z. Plural. Not just one heel, both heels. Good. And just try and keep those hands away from the middle. So you don't want that kettlebell to touch your glutes. Keep working that core. And then we're going to go to an alternating single swing. Remember that swing where we touch at the top. Two. And one, good job. All right, so starting with that right hand. Ready? Here we go. Swing up, grab, swing. Ooh, this is nice and deep on those hammies. Nice and deep on those hammies. Good. And you don't have to worry about that extra arm. If you want to just let it be loose, don't make this any more complicated than you're able to manage. It's a lot of moving pieces, lots of coordination. Knees are soft, of course, every single move we do. We really only kind of straighten the knees in the suitcase swing. 
which we're going to go to next. Good. Feeling that stretch. Oh my goodness. Opening up those hammies. There isn't really a time when I do kettlebell that I don't feel something the next day. And I've been teaching it a long time now. Rest. So now we're going to narrow up those feet. Try and squeeze the inner thighs together. Shoulders up, back and down. Remember, we're crunching the obliques, okay? Here we go. So side up. Good. Let it get a little low. But keep those knees together and the toes are up here. Now we need to stop really hard. Squeeze the glutes. Like, you know, squeeze them so tight that you'd be embarrassed for somebody to stand behind you. <laughs> Just do it. Squeeze it tight. Good. Like my husband with our budget right now. <sighs> I am not a budget person. He is. <laughs> We're both to the extreme, so that's lots of fun to meet in the middle. But he is right to be cautious, so... I am also living within that budget. Rest, okay, so now we're gonna go to the hero. But if the hero doesn't work for you, because of your surface, regular swing, okay? <clears throat> Here we go. And then up switch. Now these will go a smidge higher as you move through the plane of motion. Normally we don't take that bell above the head. But the swing you're creating so much momentum with turning the feet on the hero that it's pretty hard to just stop the bell right at your face. But every time you swing, weights in the heels, knees are soft, so if this feels awkward to you, don't do it. Just do the regular swing. Good. After this, we have some figure eights which are also a type of swing. Rest. And remember, we're going through the front of the legs, not behind. Weights in the heels, shoulders up, high down. And remember, don't bend here, don't bend over, squat down. Nothing bothers me more than when I see people do this in class. <laughs> no, 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 no. Squat. And then after this, we've got those wood chops. And this will have gone quickly, guys. Yeah, I mean, eight minutes just flies by. We're not really going for cardio necessarily today. That heart rate's gonna kind of stay in that fat burn zone. That's my favorite zone, bitches. It's my favorite zone. I do love a good cardio sesh. I am a child of the 90s and love some cardio. Okay, so we're going to start on the right. Nice wide feet. Remember, it's a single leg squat. Toes face me, okay? So lunge, rotate up. Really squat down, don't just bend. Squat. Do you remember your option from the warm up? is to press, squat press with that rotation. You don't have to wood chop. Good. <sighs> Drive it to the heel. Rotate through. These are no joke. <sighs> Feel a little bit of a stretch on that left leg and the inner thigh. Sore, but I'm being cautious by using just a 10 pound bell. Whew. Rest. Whew. Wowzers. <clears throat> I do believe that got my heart rate up the fastest. All right, here we go. Whew. Squat. Single leg squat. Swing. Sure. 
motion. Just squat, press, rotate. And rest. That was it. That was it for the swing series. It went fast, right? All right. That beep was the end of our timer. Okay, so if you wear a Fitbit or a Garmin or an Apple Watch, honestly, let me tell you the truth. You might as well just take it off for a kettlebell. My watch can't track anything <laughs> while I do kettlebell. I'm sure it's because of the motion of the arms, but if you're wearing one, you don't want to take it off, just flip it around. So that in case you do happen to flip or in the roll if your bell is heavy, you don't want to crack it. That's not going for anybody. Okay. We're going to start with that squat snatch press. So the thumb is on the interior because I want to use that tricep in addition to the shoulder. And the snatch component is that little hop. That little hop helps create some momentum to help the shoulder out because the shoulders will get tired. So just a little hop. doesn't have to be big. Soft feet. That's all you need to know. Are you ready? All right, guys. Right hand. Get set. And go. So squat, snatch, squat, press. And then come down. Did you see how I staged it down? Good. I just dropped the arm. Right? So I just you turn it back the way it came. Good. And up. Whew. Man, it's going to be a shocker when we get back to the gym and I try and pick up that 15 pounder. <laughs> That mess is gonna humble me real quick. Real quick. But it doesn't matter. We're all gonna struggle getting back. Just keep it moving. That's all that matters. Good. Drop and press. Rest. Ooh, heart rate's gonna be high. Tell me why. What are we doing? Big muscle groups. That's why. All right, left hand. Here we go. Squat, press. I would love to play music for you, but I really don't want to deal with the copyright situation. So even though I don't think they come after me necessarily in times like this, but why risk it? Why risk it? Good. I don't know why, but just then I was thinking, huh, you know what rhymes with risk it? Trist it. <laughs> These are the inner workings of my mind, okay? <laughs> Been in quarantine far too long. That's what that's a symbol of. No more rhyming, I mean it. Anybody want a peanut? What's the movie reference? Rest. Princess Bride, oh my goodness. All right, so now we're gonna deadlift, snatch, narrow row. Narrow up the feet. All right, deadlift. Snatch row, deadlift. Can you touch the ground and keep the back flat? Good. Now I am turning my hand. So my fist faces you and then I turn it to row it. And this arm, remember, don't make it more complicated than you need it to be. If you want to hold it out, feel free. Deadlift. Keep those feet a smidge narrow. Ooh, sweating. Sweating. Came in here early this morning. I'm gonna beat the heat. I'm not complaining though, I like it warm. Rest. Truth be told, I prefer cold weather with snow. But since Tennessee just gets cold weather and cloudy, rainy days, I'm not a fan. <laughs> I'm like, if it's gonna be cold, let's make it productive. I want some snow to play in. I want some snow to water my plants. Get them ready for the spring. Back is flat. Good. After we're done with this, we're gonna go back to a squat snatch. But rather than a press, 
We're going to do a squat snatch high pull. So, ooh, you're going to feel it. Dig those heels in all my hamstrings. Or they are awake. Or guy. Hi, guy. If there is one watching, hi, guy. Couple more. And rest. So, when we squat, high pull, we're going to squat and high pull. Little hop to get to it, okay? Here we go. Squat, high pull. Squat, high pull. Now, this is doable because my kettlebell is 10 pounds. You don't want to feel any sort of tension or pulling on that trap muscle. Certainly no pain in the shoulder. You can do this with the dumbbell as well. Oh yeah. Good morning, shoulders. Feeling it. Good. A few more seconds. And rest. Oh yeah. <clears throat> That's warm. All right, you ready? Here we go. High pull. Squat. High pull. Next, we're going to do a deadlift. That was deadlift. I don't know why it came out British, but deadlift with an upright row. You got that little hop. That's what makes it a snatch series. Now, truthfully, it's really more the jerking up of the weight, but you would not do these without that little hop. No, 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 no. Good. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> You're doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it well. I guess I can go acapella for you. Then you find out just how much of a white girl I really am. Rest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, deadlift upright row. So again, narrow the feet, hinge, upright row, hinge, upright row. And yes, I am pausing at the top, just for a moment. Knees are soft, weights in the heels, elbow leads the move. Me. There we go. 
That's how I like it. That's my business. That's my business. Okay. We're going to start with an elbow plank. We'll start with an elbow plank. So you're going to begin on your right elbow, and you can have that kettlebell up. So this is kind of the opposite from those triangles that we were doing earlier when we were standing. So let's go ahead and get that started. You can have that bottom knee down to support yourself, and you don't even have to have the kettlebell up, all right? So you ready to get started? All right, let's do it. Get down on that elbow. Come on up and hold. Great. The light is coming in through my garage, making me look like a flashlight. That's fantastic. And I can tell you right now I'm going to have to move this mat because I'm already sliding on it, and I don't want that elbow coming out from underneath my shoulder. So if you find you're sliding, you got to move that elbow. Now, watch. I can set that knee down. I can also set down that kettlebell and just hold that side plank. You have lots of options, okay? So don't feel like you have to make it any harder than it needs to be. Just find your level. That's cool. No shame in that game. Got a couple more seconds. And rest. So I like to get these done early because, huh, they're hard, boo. They're hard. I ain't gonna lie to you. All right. <clears throat> Woo, that 10 seconds was quick. How about that? How about that? Good. Just keep those hips lifted. And of course, keep breathing. Man, the number one mistake people make when they're doing abs is they hold their breath. And holding your breath actually builds the abdominal wall out. So really, the key to proper core conditioning is breath control. And of course, posture, shoulders up, back and down, weights in the heels. I hope you hear that the rest of your life, if nothing else. We got 10 seconds and I am dying because those shoulders were already working before. Goodness. Okay, thank you. Thank you, timer. All right, now here comes that tap back sit up. We ain't getting up. I don't have enough room in this gym and I look like an idiot. So here we go. You're gonna reach those arms back and sit up. No need to go fast here other than when you swing up. So nice, slow, lay down with those arms and then a quick sit up. Good. Oh, yummy, my braid is in my armpit. Let me move that. Considering I'm not planning on washing my hair until later tonight, I'd like that braid to stay as good as possible. I shower after I work out, but I try not to wash my hair too often because I have baby fine hair. And it would get really damaged with a lot of washing. Oh, nice job. All right, so <clears throat> we're going to come up and we're going to Russian twist. Now, I like to tap my elbow back, come up, and tap my elbow back, all right? So here we go. I feel like that's much more functional when we're training than to just sit back and hold, like right here. You would certainly feel that, and that's fine if you want to do that. But I really prefer the full action of being able to come up and then go back down with control. So that's how I like it. You could make those harder by doing a double tap and then a sit up. Double tap. Oh yeah, that's a, oh yeah, mmm, -hmm. tasty. Good. I like it. And rest. All right, so now we've got our cauldron. So I'm gonna go outside my right knee. So my left leg is gonna come up and I'm gonna use it to go outside my knee. So swing and go outside my knee. Good. Exhale up. Working the 
our shoulders again. You might find that you kind of like inchworm. <laughs> That's okay. Just scoot your booty down. trying to escape. I can feel it. They're like, stop! And done. Whew. So, this is the point that if you only have time today for this amount to work out, I need you to go through a series of stretches with your legs and your shoulders and your abs, your back, and get out of here. But, if you're going to hang with me, we're going to do that all again. Alright? So come on up. Now we're not going to need that mat. So let's go ahead and get it moved out of the way. And remember, this time we're going to go back through the swings and we'll do that around the world going to the left. All right? <clears throat> so 
we are going to be working the entire time. That's why I do like doing some core with kettlebell because you're using the core through momentum, which honestly mimics mostly how we use our core in life. You know, to get up or go to pull things, whatever. Okay, so now we're going to go around the world. Left side. Knees are soft. Shoulders up, back and down. Fix the sharp. Good. My biceps keep pulling my shirt down. I feel like I'm flashing y'all. You might be aware of your abs now. Like, I can definitely feel that they are having to work here. Because they're tired. And that's when you really start to feel some of these things, you know? Especially because 10 pounds isn't really a heavy weight. But when you're just moving it constantly through the hour, it catches up. After this, you're going to go into that single swing. Once again, hinging through the hips, knees are soft. Whoop. Almost dropped it. <laughs> Got a couple more seconds. All right, so now we're going to single swing. Start with that left hand. Shoulders up, back and down. Knees are soft. Here we go. And oh yeah. I love how deep a stretch I feel in the hamstrings there. I'm going to squeeze my glutes at the top. Nice. Good job. After this, we're going to go to those suitcases. All right. Narrow up the feet. Squeeze those inner thighs together. Shoulders up, back and down. Here we go. Pop the glutes. Nice tight pop. Pop the glutes. Just a regular swing. Here we go. And then after this, we've got figure eights. We are just breezing through. And then after figure eights, Wood chops. I don't know why I bother wearing the shirt. <laughs> Pulling it down. And rest. All right, figure eights. Remember, don't bend over. Squat through it. Really work those legs. Here we go. Digging those heels in every single time. Good. Whew. Kind of 
here, tickling my nose. Oh yeah, those quads. Yep, they're warm, they feel good. They join the party. surface like carpet you might want to take this out and just squat press and just come up to your toe you don't have to rotate through it you can even just squat press and lift the leg whenever you feel like just to work that leg but this was part of the swing series so I'm holding classic to it And rest. Man, I feel those. Holy cow. Maybe I don't do them often enough. I don't know. They're not my favorite to do in class because it's really hard to teach proper form here. And it's amazing how people don't listen to cues. Like they don't think the cues apply to them. And it's hard to go, yo, I'm talking to you. So, when more than just a handful of people aren't doing it correctly, I just take it out. But I pretty much know the group of you guys that are doing these videos, and I'm pretty positive y'all know what to do, so I ain't too worried. And rest. That was it. Swing series complete. You're done with those. Gonna drink a water. We're gonna go to that snatch. Starting, of course, with that squat snatch press. That's where we'll begin. All right. So nice wide feet, starting on the inside. Use that tricep. All right, here we go. Snatch, press. A little hop. There we go. Good job. Beep. It just informed me that my feet have moved the equivalent of the steps it would take to complete a mile. So I don't know how accurate that is. I don't know what it counts these jabs like. I don't care. <laughs> like I said a couple weeks ago, I really just focus on my Garmin for my speed data rest. So that's really what I care the most about. And steps obviously are important, especially in a time of quarantine when it's pretty easy to not get them all in. But I have a dog that needs a lot of walking, so I pretty much get my steps in, no problem. My dog is in happy heaven. He's like, three walks a day? Oh my gosh, what did I do to deserve this? He is so excited. morning that, or no, it was last night, I was watching BBC News. That's how it's gotten to me, okay? When I stopped watching American News, <laughs> I watch BBC News now. Um, and they say, keep your cats inside. Huh. Something about that coronavirus, I know that the tiger at the Bronx Zoo tested positive, so maybe that's why, I don't know, but I only have indoor cats, so that's not a problem here, but... 
I can only imagine trying to keep an outdoor cat in. Whew, good luck. All right, deadlift and snatch. My feet were a little too close there. Tap your row. Nice and tight. Stretch, feel the neck, nice flat back, check my mirror there, <clears throat> that my form is good. And rest. Alright, we've been going 45 minutes so far. We got a little bit more to go. Hang in there. Next we've got that snatch, high pull, and then we'll finish with that deadlift, snatch, upright row. And then if you were really running short on time, you could stretch and go, or hang with me and we'll get that ab series complete. But looks like we might be going past an hour, but not by much, so sorry. I must have taken too long to rest. You know, as instructors, we're always planning and trying desperately to get in a good workout with a good warm-up and a cool-down. It's very important. Lots of places these days advertising short workouts. Well, what they're really doing is minimizing the warm-up and the cool-down. Uh, hello? Can we just follow a little bit of safety? Why do we have to try and be the new fat? Just be safe. You're much better to get a proper warm-up and cool-down and a shorter workout. Especially because, huh, listen, I ain't looking at you, but not many of us are what I would describe as spring chickens. So your risk for injury, much higher. And yeah, by all means, if you want to make sure that you are going to limit your mobility as you age, keep working out crazy without a warm-up and cool-down. I dare you. Can't wait to see you at 50 in the pool or silver sneakers. And there's nothing wrong with those two organizations. They're fantastic. But I've got people in my classes that are in their 70s because they listen, because they follow, they warm up, they cool down. They've got great mobility. So don't be stupid. Good. That's why it kills me in classes when I'm trying to stretch and people put their equipment up. I'm like, just stop. Just stretch. Good lord. Or when we're taking a break and they're like tapping out and still trying to keep moving. I'm going to get you. Don't worry. Settle down. If you gotta keep moving your feet, come see me on Friday mornings for step aerobics. <laughs> so funny. You can see how people have bought into certain ideas without the knowledge. It's really sad. <clears throat> all right. So now we've got the deadlift upright row, all right? Here we go. Narrow up the feet, upright row. Tap down. Now remember on that deadlift, we're going slowly. We don't move through that as quickly as we do a squat. You've got a whole lot of posterior chain muscles there that really like you to go slowly, especially for full effect. You're trying to recruit all those muscle fibers, and the key to that is the stretch. Not the speed, not the depth, the stretch. If you knew how little somebody had to be educated to teach classes, you'd probably think twice. Especially when they work at a place that has their own education. 
where you have to go through that place's certification. I'd be a little worried about that. <laughs> I'd be a little worried about that. If it's not nationally recognized, and if your continuing education credits don't apply because you went to the certification through that small little organization you're working for, and even big gyms are small organizations in the sense that they're not nationally recognized. So you could go through all their training, your nationally recognized work, but they're not gonna accept it. So if you're taking classes, find out, are your instructors certified ACE? NASA, where they go? Do, are they just fit to her online? Yeah. That's a little iffy. Whew. Good, keep it going. And that's it for the snatch series. Woo! All right. Now let's get that mat together. We're gonna finish up with those abs. Starting, of course, with those side planks. <clears throat> All right. And by the way, I'm not trying to, you know, roast anybody or throw shade. There are lots of people I know who teach classes, who I respect, and who have done the research and have learned through time. But then there are a lot of others where I'm like, what? <laughs> And not really at our rec. We're very fortunate. We've got some great instructors at our rec. But in fact, a lot of our instructors are also personal trainers. And if it were up to me to be a personal trainer or group fitness instructor, it should be a four-year degree. You know, you're doing a whole lot of work with items that are just very dangerous. So, but that's just me. Okay, so we're going to go down to our elbow. And we've got that side plank. All right? Do you remember your options? You can have your knee down. Right? You can have both legs up. You can set the kettlebell down. You can do either or, doesn't matter. I'm gonna do my knee down because my knee down also engages the outer part of my glute on that right side. So, might as well, right? I mean, I know I'm gonna get a lot of core work, right, through this series. So, all right, I'm gonna use the glute. If I wanted to, then I could lift that top leg and really engage the glute on that bottom leg. Now, if you have any sort of IT issues, like from running or any kind of like repetitive sport injury, you may not want to do this because this is a lot of pressure on the IT band if you're not careful. But just engage the glute. Really squeeze the glute if you can. And done. Nice job. It's not a quick switch. It's not pretty, but get to that other side. And here we go. I'm having issues with this mat. Like, I'm not even using it for this. I don't know why I did that. Oh, well. Good. Good job. I worked for a gym that you had to have certifications with those nationally recognized organizations, but then they also sent you through their training. And it was really more of like what they expected on the level of instructors. And I was all about that. Like, that's great. If you're trying to create unity and like a product and a brand, send your instructors through training, but require the national trainings as well. So I loved working for that gym. They were great. And down. That was probably my favorite experience. And that was in uh, Washington, DC. So that was really nice. All right, so now we've got tap backs. So get ready, watch your arms, tap back, sit up. If you don't want to sit up, you could just crunch, take your time laying those arms back, and just lift the shoulder blades off the mat. 
All right, now we've got those Russian twists. Remember, you have your options on how you can do those. You can hold back if you like. You can do a single tap or a double tap. Maybe you kind of change it up. That's okay. What you're very aware of is how your back is feeling. So if you're feeling any kind of strain in that lower back, adjust. Now, how could you adjust? You could put the bell down and not tap the elbow all the way to the ground. That's one option. If that still bothers you, you could set that down, put down your hands, and just lift the feet a little bit, or just sit up nice and tall with that lean back. It's, you're gonna feel your core. I'm gonna double tap, and up, double tap, and up, and rest. All right, time for those cauldrons. Left leg up, how are we doing on time? 55 minutes, here we go. We're almost there. Ooh, I'm not looking forward to those partial Turkish get-ups. No, 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 no. <laughs> Try not to kick my rower. <laughs> should not try and sing Alicia Keys' song. <laughs> but it seemed appropriate. I'm going to use that bottom hand.
hands for here. Go ahead and pull those knees in. Give a nice good hug. And just stretch, just uh, roll back and forth, side to side. Stretching that back, kind of massaging it with the ground. All right, we're gonna open the arms out to either side. Let your knees fall to the right. Look left at your head and just put your right hand gently on top of that left leg. Whew. I had a dream last night that we stayed at a hotel and come on up and I had put my wedding rings like in this place in the closet. And of course, I ended up forgetting they were there. We checked out and we went back and they only had my band. They had taken the diamond out of my ring and I woke up sweating. I was like, where's my rings? And come on up. Take that right leg in the air. And now just pull that leg into you. And if you want to, you can deepen that stretch just a little bit. And now cross the foot over, reach through the space, pull it in for the stretch. I get very nervous wearing my rings. My husband um, was just the sweetest. Take that leg up. I, uh, when he proposed to me, my mom worked as a jeweler. And so my mother didn't really have any sort of sentimentality with her rings because she just always got new ones. And, you know, she could find good deals on them. So it was like, well, it's a ring, no big deal. Well, when my husband proposed to me, uh, my mom helped him find the ring, but when he proposed, he's like, no upgrading, this is it. So it meant a lot to him that, you know, that ring. And I respected that very much. Go ahead and use those knees. Now, I did change the setting on that ring, <laughs> but it was the same stone. So essentially, I, you know, it's the same. Take that right leg out. So a few years ago, I was doing my hair and my hair kept getting caught in my ring and I thought, oh, I must have a loose prom. So I took it to a jeweler here, take that leg back. Turns out my diamond was cracked. I cracked it in the gym between two weights and uh, yeah, that was awesome. And of course, you know, my husband was heartbroken and as was I, because I had that ring 16 years and it meant a lot to me, switch legs. So we went looking at rings and you know, he was like, well, we're gonna go ahead, you know, might as well just get you an upgrade. And I was like, well, I thought you said there was no upgrade and yada, yada, yada. Anyway, we decided to wait. It, you know, a ring is expensive and we're like, oh, we'll wait. Nope, he surprised me, he got me a beautiful ring. Gorgeous, but now I panic to wear it and I certainly don't wear it at the gym because I ain't cracking another diamond. I was like, uh-uh, nope. So, yeah, it was not a surprise that I had a nightmare that I lost my ring and come up, so I rarely wear it. <laughs> Which is sad since that's kind of defeats the whole point. Push off. But you know, when this is your job, like, anyway. And I've discovered that men will be men whether you're wearing a ring or not. So, especially at the gym, straighten it up. And roll it one at a time. Roll the shoulders back. It's interesting while I'm training clients to watch men flirt with the girls that are working out there. And I'm not sure they would describe this flirting. I'm sure they probably just consider it like being friendly. But um, I don't think you need to have full-on conversations with women that are not your wives. That's just me. I'm old-fashioned that way. Whatever. <laughs> Take it across. So it's it's very interesting. I'm like, mm, I don't think wives would be okay if they watched that go down. But whatever. <laughs> Deep breath in and up. And take it over to one side and over to the other and down. You're done. It was an hour and three minutes, but I had a good time. I hope you did too. So uh, come check out and see what the workout is tomorrow because I haven't really decided. Any requests? You could shoot me a message. Let me know what you're looking for. See you later.